bitch. Where's my money? If you want to help me out, you can subscribe to me on Patreon, which is Grimachu, on Subscribestar, which is Grim Jin, or if you want to make a one off donation to help support me and keep the channel going, you can do so at paypal.me, jdesborough. Thanks. Given the size of the role playing industry, there is an uncommonly large amount of controversy in the role playing industry about well, it seems like everything sometimes. Most of the time this isn't founded, it's founded in ignorance in the same way that the satanic panic around D&D was. I mean, D&D is about as vanilla and uncontroversial as you can get, even when it did have nipples and demons and all the rest of it within it. Even then, you know, that was pretty tame and mild compared to the source material that it was coming from much how people didn't really grasp anime <laughs> in the beginning because cartoons are for kids was the sort of short circuit in their brain so people didn't really understand that this was a game for young adults and, and onwards and really took off in the university crowd who were all you know drinking and smoking weed and being party animals at the time this being the 70s and the 80s but occasionally a product does come along that is controversial and perhaps there is some kind of reason for it Errol Otis's uh, well he illustrated it anyway Alma Mater comes to mind which was a kind of unflinching if exaggerated portrait of high school life that probably owed more to class of Newcomb High <laughs> than anything else and was rather unflinching in its portrayal of perverted teachers, drug taking, you know, fights, all, all the rest of it. Unfortunately I don't own a copy of that but most controversies don't really deserve to be there like D&D, like Vampire, like things that I've written that, <laughs> that have been unnecessarily controversial and a lot of it is to do with context. So we're going to be talking about Carcosa today which is an old school hex crawl setting slash kind of a system and this has always been controversial it's also probably one of the most influential supplements in the kind of gonzo old school kind of kind of set of set of ideas and it takes inspiration from science fiction science fantasy fantasy Cthulhu Mythos and stirs it all together. Of course Barrier Peaks was the first real instance of that I suppose, there might even be earlier ones, but Carcosa probably is hugely influential on the, the current crop of Gonzo D&D settings. So let's crack this bad boy open and see if any of the controversy which was all centered around uh, struggle cuddles and uh, child murder and things is justified keeping in mind that this is after all a weird gonzo horror setting here we are then carcosa by jeffrey mckinney this is the lamentations of the flame princess published version and as you'd expect from james raggi it's very nicely produced uh, hardcover nice little mini dust jacket a little more information um, color used somewhat throughout it's a very nice thing to own uh, at the very least the interior has the hex map this is really primarily a hex crawl so there's all manner of different places and things and you investigate it as you would a dungeon square by square but in this case hex by hex this is a very popular form of game and supplement in the old school movement and uh, the maps here very nice it's printed on quite rough uh, old style paper um, which is nice for the feel it fits with the ideas that are being presented here but it is somewhat fragile and prone to tearing so you'll have to treat the book <laughs> with reverence uh, art by Rich Longmore, cartography by Robert Altbauer, um, additional hex descriptions by Chris Robert, book design and layout by Iro Tuvinin, and edited by James Raggi, published by Lamentations of the Flame Princess. I often don't credit people, but since it's there uh, and nice and easy to see, not a problem. Illustrations, by and large, 
are, are very nice and again in keeping. Uh, it has its own little. Well, obviously there's the there's the chambers thing. Uh, quote. Wish we ever. Wish we'd really got the rest of that play. Um, but this just explains that it's the combined version with everything in it, everything all together. It's a nice way of illustrating the dice with the kind of squiggly men here. It does have its own system, but uh, I don't know anyone who uses it. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't use it. I'd probably commit the ultimate heresy and use something like Legends of Anglaire if I was going to run it, which I may at some point. Uh, this just kind of tells you everything you need to know. There's a guy in squiggly knightly armor wielding a mace and a blaster pistol astride a giant caterpillar thing facing off against somewhat Stone Age people in, in loincloths with swords. And there's a guy getting his head blown off. So, yeah, as an opening illustration, I guess that really tells you all you need to know. Uh, more of this is just system, which again, I don't think anyone's going to use. It's broadly compatible with other old school. Um, sets of rules or even science fiction rules uh, you could quite easily port this across and have it run in machinations of the space princess or lamentations obviously or basically anything it's mostly a source of ideas you don't need to worry too much about stats particularly uh, there's some rules for psionics so the main classes or are sorcerers or fighters and that's pretty pretty much it but then you've got options for psychic powers and controls some flora and fauna which seems a bit of a weird thing to start with talking about weird technology I think you'll find uh, shades of Cholt in this Cholt could be another region almost though it's a bit more happy-go-lucky gonzo than this but you can find weird technology technological artifacts psionic artifacts magical artifacts all kinds of weird strangeness and this is really where the value of the book is I think in just throwing a huge bunch of weird ideas all together you can think of it as a kind of horrific rifts with a system that works better even though nobody would use it than rifts um, and the Cthulhu stuff does kind of drip out of every part of the setting it lays underneath everything and it, that makes sense when you consider you know the king in yellow and lake harley and the hyades and so on and that's why it fits in with the with the science fantasy better than some gonzo settings do i think because lovecraft and his contemporaries formed this kind of shared universe and because it bleeds over into technology and ancient aliens and weirdness and 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 so on and because it's had such a massive appeal and grip upon people it creates a sort of substrata a substrate that makes all of this hang together better than perhaps it does in in other settings the groundwork has been done and you can it just helps ease you into the weirder stranger uh, peculiar things um, it makes a big thing out of rituals and this is where the controversy comes in I think this is what people really started taking offense to but it's designed to be horrific it's designed to outrage it's designed to be offensive because it's a horror setting and when it comes to the sorceress rituals when you consider things that either happened or people were accused of doing in the past sacrificing people it, it makes sense you know this is the kind of exchange that people talk about when they talk about evil magic and human sacrifice and sacrifices to the gods and so on and so it makes perfect sense that the accursed pits of sighing ritual would require the disemboweling of a jail boy and the sliding of his corpse into the waters yeah it it it, it makes sense in the setting the setting is not supposed to be nice is it controversial to have players potentially doing these kind of things i mean if you're playing an evil campaign why why would it be but then some people regard that as controversial people playing evil characters or acting out evil ways 
even though a lot of horror films have the antagonists winning or, or at least surviving to the end and slaughtering their way through all kinds of, of things. And we often root for the anti-hero. It doesn't really say anything about us. It's a form of entertainment. It's a safe way of playing with the dark side. So if there are rituals in which people have to be sacrificed, yeah, it just makes sense thematically, horrifically. It makes sense in the in the context of all the sort of blasphemous horrors that Lovecraft would have talked about. So why not? I mean, this is really an outside context problem for me. I, I mark a strict line between reality and fantasy. The kinds of people who criticize don't seem to. They talk about bleed between character and player. Emotion's one thing, but bleed, the idea that what happens to your character somehow transfers to you. Oh no! Not Blackleaf! It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. I don't know why anyone would think that or experience that. And if they are the kinds of people that do run into that kind of um, mental short circuit, they shouldn't be playing games. They shouldn't be reading books. They shouldn't be watching films <laughs> because clearly there's something wrong with them that means they can't differentiate fiction and fantasy from reality. It's the same problem you run into with people who think that yeah, even evil people can't be sexists or misogynists or rapists without it being some sort of reflection on the person that created uh, that that antagonist, that enemy, that person that you're supposed to hate in the fiction. Or that somehow fiction gives you license to do things in reality or, or normalises it. And it just it makes absolutely no sense to me. And if you're someone who does think that, uh, does experience that, then you should not be playing <laughs> anything. But le leave it to people who are fine with it because they're fine with it. It's a, it's, it is somewhat organised, but there is also a, a, a lovely jumbled up aspect to this, even though it's, it's broadly divided into sections such as monsters here, although they're really much more characterful and more like uh, boss fights <laughs> for the most part than, than normal actual monsters, and they will provide a, a significant challenge to any player. But even though it's broadly organised, there is... There is an experience of discovery as you go through the book, little pieces of inspiration and so on. And this is something I've always liked about adventure books that I've written or worked on or setting books that I've written or worked on or have influenced in some way. I always make a big deal out of story seeds because they create more long-term use for, for a product. And it's what these things are for. It's all very well describing the, the history and the background and, and so on of a setting, but if you don't provide story seeds and plot hooks and so on that people can then spin out into adventures, it's a very limited use for people. But this is just dotted with inspiration and ideas everywhere through the whole book. And th there's an experience to reading through it that's kind of like wandering through a bazaar or a huge higgledy-piggledy department store. You know, the, the act of looking around, of searching and discovering things is enjoyable in and of itself. You know, there's, there's, the, there's the convenience of online shopping uh, on eBay or whatever, and then there's the experience of going to a, you know, a, t a tiny little shop in a, in a back alley shopping arcade somewhere and, you know, and rooting through the stacks for something that you... You, you want or that takes your fancy and this is more akin to that in a lot of ways the use of color throughout the book is fairly subtle um, God knows how much more it costs to include the purple and green probably as much as if it had been full color and it's a very subtle sort of pastel set of shades which I think reduces the effect somewhat as compared with something like Cholt with its full color assault on the senses but it's it's um, 
it's effective i suppose it just if you're going to do that why not go the whole hog i suppose and then there's the paper quality and i suppose the the overall cost as well still all right then we get into the real meat of the book uh, about halfway through it which is details on every single sort of part of the map which are nicely handily referenced by number in the same way that the old uh, traveler space maps were the descriptions are fairly scant a lot of them are just encounters but combining that with the previous detail should give you everything you need to know and that's only most of the locations and the things that can that can happen there occasionally it'll go into a longer description and give you more details on these locations and encounters and contacts and everything else you know sometimes a whole a whole paragraph rather than rather than just a snippet there's a lot of very weird stuff stuff you can spin out into whole adventures you know villages with particular problems some stuff that interrelates different hexes one to another um, some things refer to several hexes at once so there's a, a, a rift here that runs through several hexes and they'll all be collected together and interreferenced. Uh, discussions of rituals, places where rituals are being conducted or need to be conducted or have been conducted. Um, yeah, I'm just skipping through this because it is just all rather short, scant, but everything that's necessary in terms of encounter descriptions. I think I would, if I was doing this, my inner writer would come out and I would, uh, I would probably write some florid descriptions for each of the hexes where anything particularly uh, interesting was occurring. That's largely missing here. It's very matter of fact and that's a, that's a bit of a shame compared to the first half of the book. But you can understand why it's rather scant and uh, concise. Uh, then we have an example adventure the fungoid gardens of the bone sorcerer you know you can come up with pretty decent uh, carcosa adventures just by using a random word generator online <laughs> probably but it gives you an idea of what sort of thing uh, is being talked about and how to divide up areas into sub hexes so that you can expand on the material that is there um, sample adventures in games, I think they're largely a waste of space. You should just publish uh, a, a starting adventure separately, but they can be useful for demonstrating how you intend the game to be played in a way. Let's Plays are probably better for demonstrating that and can help you sort of get into the rules and rules interpretations and show people how to play. But the thing is, published adventures often bear very little resemblance to how people actually play <laughs> uh, which is something I'm reaffirming as I'm as I'm running Dragon Warriors recently um, from published adventures just because it's uh, low on you know low on the amount of time it takes to get going uh, then we get some essays on human society there some random monster encounters um, and some monsters that look rather random <laughs> as well at the same time. Um, a truly random monster spawn of Shabnigarath. Um, expanded weapons. So yes, there you can see the sort of blasters and things. Uh, kind of like Slain when Slain jumped the shark, except science and not ley lines. They probably get the get the two together. <laughs> Uh, random generation for robots, which is interesting, and comes up with some really severe things. Mutations, which are always fun to inflict on people. Um, some more reference to rituals. Yeah, we're just into the kind of reference stuff here. And then an index, which is semi-useful, but you really need to read through the whole book once to get the true value out of it. So, what do I think? Style. It is a very stylish book. Every choice, every artistic choice, everything, it all, it all makes sense. It's very well presented, very well put together. The style... Yeah, 
that's the thing is it's drawn back by the paper quality and the too subtle use of color for the setting i think particularly when there's all kinds of different colors of human being which didn't really get illustrated in the book with color so a style four out of five very good effort just if you're going to go to that much effort you might as well go the whole way uh it is, is my thinking but it's basically and it didn't quite do that substance it's very substantive there's a hell of a lot in here that's useful for a lot of different things uh so in terms of value for money it, it's all there the experience of reading through the book is a good one and will greatly inspire you and you'll discover all kinds of little things that spark other ideas in you so there's a lot in there but when you go back to try and reference it and to read through it and to find the things that sparked your inspiration in the first place unless you jotted down the page numbers the index is good but it's not good enough for that and that makes it less usable as a reference during play outside of that half of the book that's purely reference to the hexes so in terms of substance i mean there's a lot there it should get a five and the experience of reading through the book is good but it's hard to get back to the substance that you found again the second time so in terms of substance again i'm going to give it a four so it's four out of five very good controversy probably not particularly justified but it does contain dark and horrific elements but of course it does really uh, <laughs> you have to be pretty pretty stupid not to take the take the context into account um yeah recommended uh buy it if you can find a copy i believe there's electronic copies available um i don't know if there's any hard copies still available uh, because this was quite a few years ago now this was published but uh, if you do find it I definitely recommend buying it Zang Satana Station is an addition to machinations of the Space Princess it's a whole sleazy space station full of locations, services, adventures and inspiration for your old school space opera games over 100 locations, a bevy of non-player characters, and more plot hooks than you can shake an Arcturo mega stick at. Buy it at post-mort.com, drive through RPG, and hard copy at lulu.com.